All right, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> welcome to the Attack of the B Team finale. This is episode 125. Guys, I have no clue how long this video is going to be, um, but I've got a couple fun things to do this episode. Um, I've got some stuff to talk about and some thanks to give out. I'll, I'll get to the thanks first. So first of all, Generic B and B00, the B Team, thank you guys so much for inviting me to be a part of this. This this series and this server and this Minecraft experience has been something that uh, honestly has been one of the coolest and most fun things I've ever had the opportunity to be a part of. Um, so thank you guys so much, both of you, for you know inviting me and you know, to be a part of this whole thing. It was it was amazing, and and I would love to do something like this again. Um, and you know, thank you to everybody else that was you know on the server as well for playing along with my role playing as the evil witch and putting up with my antics early on, and uh, even those you know people that recorded with me and stuff like that. Thank you for being there. Thank you for having fun with me and and just doing everything. And then most importantly. Thank you to you guys. Thank you to the fans so much for supporting this series as much as you did and for watching it and just generally like loving it. You guys fell in love with this series and it was awesome to see. It was really, really awesome. Um, it came at a really important time for my channel too. Um, my channel, you know, was kind of struggling a little bit and then this series kind of came along and kind of picked it back up. And uh, unfortunately, I'm at the point now where, you know, the series is, is sort of um, dying down. It's, it's sort of died out a little bit. But uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that um, later. However, today's episode is all about spilling the beans and, and spilling the, the secrets that I have for you guys. All the stuff I have kept concealed during this series um, from you guys and from the other members of the server. So I'm gonna explain some of the witchery side of things today that um, allowed me to basically win every battle and I, I might make some of you guys mad, but you know what? You loved it and you enjoyed it when you watched it, so don't you dare complain. Oh, and by the way, welcome to 60 FPS Attack of the B Team finale. So that's kind of sweet. So yeah, make sure you guys watch this in 60 FPS. Um, but anyways, let's get to it. So uh, the first thing I wanna talk about, I guess, is just how much I love this room. This tower and this Tower of Evil has been like th one of the coolest builds I think I've ever I've ever created. I, I absolutely love this tower. Like this is something, this tower is something that um, I will always, always, always remember as maybe quite possibly my best, probably is my best build ever in Minecraft. Um, so, you guys want the dirty dirty and the secrets, right? All right, I'll get to that. Before we do that, I just wanna say, right at the beginning of this video, um, why is the series coming to an end? Let's answer that, let's answer that big question, because I know a lot of people want that answer. A lot of people wanna know why this series is coming to an end, and I don't really know what to do with my camera here, I don't know what to do with my game, I don't know whether to play it or just talk to you guys, so I'll probably just sit here and talk. But, the reason I'm ending the series is I feel like I feel like it's just time to move on, you know? I've done 125 episodes of Attack of the B Team. And while a lot of you guys still enjoy it, that is like somebody a person like myself can only do something such as this for so long before you get burned out on it, right? So even if you, the viewer, may really enjoy this, me, the com the content creator, is getting bored, basically. That's kind of what it bubbles down to. Um, also, the series is very different now uh, than when it started, right? When it started, everybody was on the server at once. Look at that. I am the only one on right now. Um, and that's how it's been for like 50 episodes almost. I mean, it's been, yeah, every time I got on here now, lately, it's it's just me. And um, that's totally fine because everybody else has, has already moved on. Like. I'm one of the last people still doing this series. I know Generic B hasn't uploaded a episode of Attack of the B Team in about two months. And that sort of brings me to another point when people said, Jim, I don't, I didn't like the, the direction your, your series went. I want it back to how it was at the beginning. Or I want it back to, you know, fight people, go back and, 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 and create more battles with everybody. It's not easy to do when everyone else has moved on. Once again, I'm the only one on the server. So, um, it's, it's the kind of thing where I could try and organize something and get everybody back together, but if people have mentally sort of moved on from the series and they've sort of like taken their channels in a new direction and, and are doing different things now and newer things now, bringing them back to something older is gonna be a lot harder. And that was something that I really struggled with because I started seeing comments about halfway through the series, um, 
you know, I was still doing the witchery stuff, but everybody was like, this is getting boring. Like, you guys had your pitchforks out and you're like, ah, this is getting boring. This is, this sucks. And, and we just want you to fight people. And I was like, okay, well I'll try. And I'll, I'm trying my best to keep it as interesting as possible for you guys. But when nobody's on, it's really, really hard. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's another reason why the series took a, took a change and took a different direction. Uh, specifically with me going to, to the moon and the Mars and all, and all that stuff. I decided, hey, there's a mod in this mod pack I haven't even touched yet. I want to explore it, you know? And I had already mentally checked out of the witchery stuff. I had already moved move away, moved away from that. And I think some people were still stuck on the fact that they wanted me to just basically have it be like it used to be. Well, the way it used to be was the way it used, used to be. Like, that was like months and months and months ago. And everybody just kind of like moved on from that. And it's just sort of like, that's just the nature of the beast. That's the cycle of life. There, nobody is to blame for that. You know, I don't, I don't blame like uh, B dubs or generic or Gliss for not being on the server and playing as much. That's their prerogative. Like if they don't want to do it, they don't have to do it. You know, like I happen to just kind of be on here every now and again, now and again, just to record a video. But if those guys don't want to do videos any longer, then that's completely fine. And honestly, I think they reach the point that I'm at right now sooner than what I reached it at right now. <laughs> so months ago, they were like, yeah, this series is kind of dying out. I'm going to put the brakes on it. And they did. And you know, my, my series was still doing pretty well, so I wanted to continue it, but now it's kind of like, yeah, let's just move on. So that sort of answers that question. I think a lot of people kind of wanted that answer, and I hope I hope I made it as clear as I can. Um, I'm not very good at explaining things sometimes, especially during a recording. I'm That's probably one of the things I am the worst at ever of all time in my entire life, uh, is explaining a point during a recording. But that's neither here nor there. Um, I hope you guys understand where I'm coming from. Um, and in, in no ways is, is that me just basically like, you know, crapping on you guys or anything and saying that you guys bugged me. No, that's not it at all. Like, I'm just explaining sort of what happened and why the series sort of ended up changing. So that is that. Now let's get to the fun stuff, shall we? So the secrets. You guys want to know how I was invincible, right? We're going to have to go to bat mode for this. So I used a little something. Of course, you know this. Um, the... Uh, my Horcruxes, of course, which were the death protection poppets, okay? Each one of these suckers, I made a bunch of them and spread them out all across the world. They basically protected me from dying. If I ever got low on health, they would kick in and essentially save me, right? I made all of them legit. Every single one was made with materials that were legit. Actually, everything in this series was made with materials that was legit. That was the best part about the series. But these things are very, very expensive. Um, you gotta make them with, uh, where is it here? Come on, game, don't lose frames on me now. Um, no, it's this one right here. Yeah, the golden nuggets and then you got to get like the drop of luck. These are the really rare parts right here. But anyways, um, I had a bunch of these scattered across the world. I'm going to show you guys one of my Horcruxes um, soon uh, in the video. But another little trick I hooked up was these guys, the vampiric poppets, right? So early, early on in the series, um, the vampiric poppets I used to sort of like troll people and kill generic B and, and all that stuff. That was hilariously fun. However, before the first battle, I rigged up a little contraption. You guys are gonna absolutely love this. I kept this secret for so long too. Um, I rigged up a contraption, uh, actually I actually had two of them, that were concealed in my mysterious forest, okay? Now if you come over here, come over here, there's a tree right here. And this tree has a secret right there. And it drops down into a secret lair, okay? Now, in the secret lair, there is a door, and this door has a, uh, I think, yeah, no, it's just got a normal carpenter's door right here. And inside here, this is my storm machine, okay? Now, it's not working right now. As you guys know, I had like a night machine in my base, which I would automatically make at nighttime all whenever I wanted. Well, I also had a storm machine too, because in order to create uh, some, or in order to do, to do curses on people, a lot of those curses had to take place while it was storming, so I said, look, in the event of a battle, if people are attacking me or whatever, I need to be able to make it storm immediately and then go to a specific location and do a curse. So I had I had an actual storm machine here that, um, believe it or not, um, was wired outside because it controls the rain. So right now it's reading that the rain is off. This is a rain sensor and this actually goes straight up to um, surface. Like you could see straight down into here. Um, and because it's raining is off, there's no current coming through here. But if the raining was on, this would be on, blah, blah, blah. It's a bunch of complicated redstone. I'm not really going to explain it. However, this power cord runs all the way. Look at the mini map. Look at the mini map. This is where I am. 
It runs all the way underground. All the way underground and attaches. I'm in my tower now. I'm in the walls of my tower currently. Uh, and it goes like it goes up craziness through here, right? Like like this is part of like the back end stuff that I would do off camera that like a lot of you guys didn't end up seeing. I can't get through there apparently. Why not? It looks like I can get through there. There we go. Um, oh, and I can't get through that part. It stops at some point. I can't get through everything. But um, that goes up to my sort of control room, which is like the second top floor of my tower. And I would flip on this the storm machine, and a pulse would come right down through here. And okay, are we gonna are we gonna fly? Like what's happening? A pulse would come all the way down through here and come up here and hit this and then go into my machine and then it would create a um, the, the the automatic ritual or whatever from the the witchery and it would go ahead and activate with the uh, autonomous activator. Now, like I said, I don't think it's work anymore. Some update happened along the way. Um, oh, that's another thing too. The developers that were helping us create this mod pack, by the way, um, the update stopped like a couple months ago too. So they were no longer updating it as well. And that's another reason why the series kind of died out. But anyways, that's neither here nor there. Uh, but anyways, it would make the storms happen. And that was kind of cool. It was a lot of fun. So um, that's the storm machine. Now, that's not the only thing that's down here in this secret lair, I might add. Straight across, we've got a lever, a torch lever that is secret. Okay. Um, this right here, this is going to be very scientific evil of me. I have iron golems in here, which is, you know, iron golems have a lot of health. And these iron golems um, are actually standing in, uh, do I have, oh gosh dang it, I don't have, oh well, let's just do this, I'll show you guys. Uh, these iron, iron golems are actually standing in a regenerative liquid and I went to, oh good lord, uh, I went to the, um, uh, what's it called, the promised land and I picked up some of this natural spring water which has a regenerative effect to it as you can see you got regeneration now why are they standing in here why are they labeled what's what's going on Jim this looks crazy yeah it is pretty crazy I had to map all this out I worked with the uh, the, the, the mod creator of witchery to sort of um, plan this whole thing out but these iron golems are basically my punching bags so what I would do in the event of a battle check this out you guys are gonna hate me you're gonna hate me because I'm too smart I've got well I had like hmm, how many did I have I had nine of these guys over here. Um, they're all still alive, I think. So I had a couple different floors. Yeah, they're all still alive. <laughs> I had a couple different floors. All the floors were secret and concealed. And um, basically what I would do, I grabbed the tag locks from each single one of these uh, iron golems. I linked them up to vampiric puppets. Before the battle would begin, I would make sure that my puppet shelf was activated here with the vampiric puppets here. So any single time I took damage, the vampiric puppets, which were in this loading in the same chunk, that's why this is a vertical thing and not just a giant hallway of, of iron golems. I had to make sure that they were, it was like in the same chunk. Um, so anytime I took damage, it passed the damage off to the iron golems. And actually in one case or a couple of the cases, uh, like in the first battle when B-dubs was like, I'm an iron golem. The reason he changed into an iron golem because he was actually doing damage to me and the damage was going through me, through the vampiric puppet, and it ended up killing an iron golem. Well, he hadn't morphed into an iron golem yet. Nobody had, because nobody had made any on the server and nobody had killed any to get their morph. So he morphed into an iron golem because he technically killed an iron golem, and I was taking no damage. So yeah, I'm a complete jerk, but honestly, I used the mechanics of the mods given here to uh, entertain you guys as best as I could, and, and that was something that that was really, really awesome. And I did it in the second battle as well. I think Schism turned into an Iron Golem or something like that. But uh, that was my dark little secret. And then of course, if you killed all my Iron Golems, then you still have to kill me X number of times to get through my all of the death protection puppets that I had. I was pretty much unkillable. Let's just admit it. I was pretty much unkillable. So that was insane uh, and a whole lot of fun. I made this whole like little area down here too one one night off uh, off camera just messing around. I made like this weird looking shrine to myself. No, I am not obsessed with myself. Don't worry. But it does not end there, ladies and gentlemen. Let me tell you, I actually had another one of these locations. What is that? Wait a minute. Oh, <gasps> oh wait, hold on. Seriously, what is that? They didn't steal an eye. Why is there a... Why is there... Did an Enderman steal that? Oh no, gosh, I'm stupid. This is part of my goblin camp, of course. Of course. Oh, dude, I didn't look at you. I didn't look at you. I didn't. I didn't do it. Come fight me. 
go one last one of these suckers in this stinking biome that I've been living in. That was another thing, man. This biome was just very dark and, and depressing sometimes. Anyways, here we go. Got another one right here, another secret. So in here, yet another nine iron golems that I rigged up that are all standing in this amazing regenerative liquid. So I put them in the regenerative liquid so that when the battle was over, if anyone, any of them had lower health, they would just go back up to full health so I wasn't wasting iron by having you know a bunch of iron golems being killed every single time. But as you can see here, uh, none of them got damaged because none of those ones which were placed, or I guess made first, um, were killed. At least the poppets were, weren't killed, I guess. Um, well, I think they were a couple of the times, but they never got through all of them enough to get to like the backup nine iron golems that I made. So you'd have to kill me, you'd have to go through uh, 18 iron golems and you'd have to do number enough damage to kill me uh, through 18 iron golems and then like just a crap ton of death protection poppets. So I was pretty much an evil, evil wizard. Um, so that is that, okay? So there's more, there's more secrets, don't worry. If you guys are wondering what, um, the control room was. This was the control room, okay? Um, so this is the bat machine. If I flip this on, it'll create a, like a whole ton of bats that might lag out the server. I don't want to do that. This is the nether trap activator. And the nether trap activator, where, did, where is that? What happened to that? Dun, 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 dun. Where is, where did that go? NTA, oh, uh, right here. This is the nether trap activator. So I would put something inside this chest, which is not opening, I guess. Some of the stuff must have changed because of updates and whatnot. Um, that would trigger a bunch of crazy redstone-ness in the nether trap and basically teleport teleport a player there. You guys saw that happen. Um, over here is the dungeon trap activator. This is the nether trap feed and that was, where is that? Why am I so confused? Oh, did some of these things get, hold on. Did some of these things get changed or covered up? I wonder, I thought there was something behind here. No? Hmm. I am out of practice right now, honestly. I don't remember what that was for. And NTF Nether Trap Feed. That's what it, that's what it stood for. But there's nothing over here. Uh, dungeon Trap Feed. Yeah, something happened at one point, I think, and I lost like. Oh okay, yeah, that's a ghost block. And there's supposed to be an autonomous activator. There's supposed to be like a chest here or something. I don't know if somebody came through and disabled dismantled all this. I don't think that they did. Oh yeah, secret chest right here. Oh yeah, that's what I did, duh. There's a bunch of, oh shoot. Dang it, I just messed that up. Oh gosh, dang it. Okay, hold on. There was, I, I, I exchanged them all. Somebody found out what I was doing at one point and I, I ended up exchanging them all for secret chests, which are part of the, um, oh, what's it called? A secret rooms mod. Um, so that was, oh, let's just do this. Whoop. Um, that was teleporting, if you didn't know about that. Uh, yeah, so this, let me see here. Should Probably shouldn't have broken that. So that was a chest, right? Chest right there. That means that there's a chest right there. Yep, dungeon trap feed, you put an item in there. It goes through the tesseract in there. Hits a, another chest somewhere else in the world. Um, and then a comparator, um, which can detect things inside chests, pu puts out a redstone signal that basically activates the um, trap, which would be an automated witchery ritual that would transport someone to wherever I wanted to, like this would be the nether trap that I made. Um, there's also, yep, the chest right here. I remember I exchanged all those out. If I were to do a battle right now, I probably would lose because I don't remember any of this stuff. But anyways, um, so that is all those things. There's little things here like the night machine. Um, all this stuff is wired up through my tower, as you guys know. Um, a lot of crazy redstone sort of behind the building. Uh, or behind the walls here and stuff like that. Now, I wanna show you guys where that nether trap was, or the dungeon trap was actually located. So this whole time, I had this secret wall right here whoop, that would go out into like a cave that I explored at one point. If you go down, I think it's down here, hold on. No, if you go straight, I'm, I haven't done this in forever. If you go straight over here, then down, um, then down, you just keep going down, 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 down. This was like a cave I explored very early on once I moved over here. And then right here is my pride and joy, which is the uh, the demon trap, right? So we've got the, uh, there's an altar right here. And then in this, all this craziness, all of this craziness right here, you can hear player detector things just went off. So basically what it would do <laughs> is it would teleport you into this obsidian box, right? Because there's a, um, there's basically a automated witchery ritual happening in here. There's redstone that goes through the wall there and then straight up to my tower. Um, 
basically what would happen was it would teleport you into the box. In the case of the fight with, with B-dubs and generic, there were pre-placed demons just sitting in there already. I knew they were gonna attack the, the player that suddenly appeared there, right? And so what I did was I rigged up some potions. Uh, these potions would go off as soon as a player entered the, the area. Usually it'd be like a, a poison potion and a harming potion. And so you'd immediately be poisoned once you entered into here. You'd be hit with um, instant damage from the, uh, <laughs> the, the potion of harming. And then if there were the demons in here, they would just kick your butt. And uh, that was sort of like just the, the awfulness of that. I think um, at one point I redid this trap and I think the whole floor that you see down there except for what, well no, actually, I think the whole floor actually may drop out, and I think what I wanted to do at one point was substitute, because I was changing this trap all the time, was I was wanted to substitute some of that with like sludge and um, poison water and stuff like that, and have people basically be trapped in this dark box, just dying to death. And I think that actually happened to Schism too in the second fight, I'm not 100% sure, I think I may have gotten that trap to go off, and uh, the floor was just ghost blocks, so he would you'd get teleported here and then fall straight through, and, you would if you were dis disoriented or whatever, um, which I think one of the waters, like the the sludge or something, made you nauseous, so it would like make your camera go crazy, and then there'd basically be no way of you getting out. Um, so that was that. I think there was is there another there was there was another thing behind this wall too. Yeah, there was um this was another ritual. Uh, thing. Oh oh yeah yeah yeah. This ritual is constantly running to keep. <laughs> This ritual's constantly running to keep these witchery barriers up. So if you did escape the trap, you'd, uh, the sludge trap in here, I remember I reworked this. If you did escape the sludge trap, you'd basically still then just be trapped inside these witchery blocks, which you can't, you cannot break. You cannot break them whatsoever. And if you were to break like this obsidian, it would fill this obsidian in with the witchery block. So it was like the most brutal of brutal traps. Like I tell you guys, I was a complete jerk. I was a total and complete jerk, but it made for amazing stuff, right? Am I right? <laughs> oh man, this stuff, I cannot tell you guys how much time that stuff took to make as well. Like that stuff was crazy. Um, back here, a little secret too. I just was growing some like, um, uh, oh, they're not growing anymore. What the heck happened? Weird, I had a bunch of like of these weird like tinkers plants in here and then the ones from like N Natura that grow in the nether and they, oh, I think I took them took them out because they overgrew this whole place. It was like up to the ceiling and it was pretty insane. Um, but anyway, so that was back there. <sighs> I'm trying to think of what else I want to show you guys. Um, oh man, uh, let's see, down here, of course. Oh, over here is a zombie grinder um, that I had made. I don't think I ever, well, maybe I did show it. I can't remember. We've got that. The demon shop that I made one episode was, where is that? Oh, it's over here, right here. There's the demon, um, just chilling in there, ready to trade and whatnot. And this is all below my tower, like pretty far below. Um, not as far down as like that trap I just showed you, but um, it's it's down here. Uh, <laughs> this craziness. Um, I've got power, of course, running throughout the entire building, but you guys already knew that. Uh, oh, this little guy over here, this Tesseract, is to basically feed, it's a wood sword and wood ash, the storm machine um, to replenish that. If I ever needed to replenish it, I would do it from here. I would grab the items out of here and this test rack would send it to a test rack that was hooked up uh, at the storm machine uh, location that I showed you guys earlier. Um, What else do I wanna show you guys? Oh my gosh, there's so much stuff. Um, this room, not much secret stuff about this one. Oh, oh, I know, I know, I know, I know. So. The second battle, I think, yes, the second battle, I created an off-site curse room because the first battle I realized and I, I fine-tuned the heck out of my plan and my schemes, right? Because I had to maintain my prestige as the Dark Lord, you know? There's a behind the mist in the curtain is what you guys are seeing now, basically. But uh, after reviewing my uh, like performance on the first battle, I decided that um, I was having trouble putting some curses on some people, and I, in the second battle, I wanted to disable flight because that was a new thing that was added. So I took this little house out here that was part of the witchery mod, and I actually went ahead, and I love the secret rooms mod because, check this out, drop floor right there. I made a giant room down here with curses. So we've got curse of misfortune, curse of insanity, a Curse of Sinking, and Curse of Corrupt Poppet. And down here, um, I think the altar power got lowered, but uh, I put plants and everything down here to make enough nature to supply this 
thing. And if you guys remember, I think I did some curses in here in the second battle. Um, I teleported myself here or whatever, but because uh, I made like, uh, you know, the, the circle magic teleportation stuff or whatever, I had a really cool way of getting around, which honestly now I probably couldn't even do because I haven't done any of that stuff in a long, long time. But I made an extra room and that room was basically located um, right here. Now, a lot of those battles and stuff, I would disable my mini map so that people couldn't see on the mini map where I was if like another one of my opponents was watching the video or something. Like, it was very secretive, you guys. It was very, very secretive, I tell you. It was very secretive. Um, I'm trying to think of what else what else there was that I wanted to show you guys. I mean, those are really kind of like the big dark secrets, right? Those are the the, the big, big dark secrets um, that I have. Uh, you guys know about that little hole in the floor there that was a lot of fun. Um, this is sort of like a teleportation area that I had as an easy getaway. Um, Apothecary Quintavius, he disappeared at some point. I don't know what happened to him, uh, but I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I want to share with you guys in terms of secrets. I don't think that there are. Um, oh, the texture on that guy got loaded wrong. This is basically just a service hatch that I had um, inside my, uh, my, uh, in, it's sort of this is sort of inside the walls, right? So this is like the um, the second floor here, and all of my redstone wiring is happening behind here. So we've got the storm machi machine trigger it goes down that way. Um, over this is so like official. It's like in in the uh, in the crawl spaces of my evil tower. It's really freaking cool. Dungeon trap activator. This guy goes like I think it goes like all the way down. Oh yeah, I can't get through here because I got micro blocks there and stuff like that. But yeah. A lot of stuff that it just I just didn't show. I straight up did not show you guys um, because I didn't. It wasn't that I was trying to keep it away from you guys, but it was more that I was trying to keep it away from all the people that I was I was sort of trying to kill and stuff like that. So that was a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, that's kind of like the secrets. That's sort of like behind the curtain, <laughs> if you will. And I cannot tell you guys how much planning and thinking and redstone work and you know um some of the stuff i even collaborated with like direwolf on he would just sort of like through skype and sending me pictures and stuff like when I, when i made the um the light over here that flickered on and off in my uh in my armory oh gosh i don't want to do that in the armory gosh dang it um this was like a ton of work um that you know direwolf helped me with and stuff like that where the lights like you know, they kind of flicker on it totally lags the game out big time i probably didn't even see it there because I went down to like four frames, <laughs> but um, but yeah, like you know, a lot of this stuff was was really uh, a lot of work, a lot of freaking work, and and microblocks, you know that that mod was amazing in terms of like sort of helping me um, conceal a lot of this stuff in my uh, in my walls because from the outside the tower looks pretty normal, right? That's the one of the things I loved the most about it was that it just looks kind of normal. Um, so what is the future of this series? Um now that you're watching the finale, right? So the future of the series, um, I was watching b um finale video the other day and he mentioned in his video that his series was ending. However, he wanted to leave it open for like collaborations and stuff like that. I like that idea a lot. I think if at any point, um, I know like B-dubs has been working on um, like a Counter Strike map in the in the actual map of, um, uh, or in the actual world. Sorry, I can't think. Um, you know, if, if he were to say to me and a couple other people, "Hey, let's jump on the server and let's play uh, Counter Strike in my map that I created in Attack of the B Team," I would say, "Sure, let's do it." Right? Like, like we could do that totally as another episode of Attack of the B Team. So. I am open to um, collaborations. I think I am done with um, the solo stuff. Uh, I would like to apologize, unfortunately, for you know not getting to certain things that I wanted to get to, like building a Quidditch arena and um, you know finishing my shop in town and stuff like that. Uh, I know a lot of you guys probably wanted to see me do that, and I'm really really sorry that I never got around to it. Um, the Quidditch arena was kind of one of those projects that was like I knew I could build it, but it would take forever. It'd be kind of boring and at that stage I was sort of like done with building stuff. I just kind of wanted to mess around with some different mods and things like that and I knew that like the game, if it was going to become a game, would have to have like, I'd have to test it, balance, like and balance it and make sure that everything was like okay and that you could actually play it on a broom and it wasn't like insanely ridiculous and stuff like that. So I kind of gave up on that, sort of gave up on the shop too because I just ended up being a lot of work and I do apologize about, you know, sort of leaving any 
anything unfinished. Um, but I hope you guys understand. And uh, so anyway, so the future of the series is, you know, if anybody wants to come to me with a collab or I have an idea for a, col a collab with somebody else on the server, um, that's kind of where the series is going to be left right now. So this is sort of like, this is the finale, but like I said, if something were to come up, um, you might see another episode here or there. Now, there are talks, sort of, maybe, we're not sure 100% yet, of another mod pack that we're going to be putting together. Um, and some of you guys, I think, have maybe heard about it called Revenge of the B Team or something. I don't honestly at this point know the specifics of that. It might happen, but I'm not 100% sure yet. If it does, that I think is something that I will probably be a part of, would love to be a part of. Um, I hope it happens. I think it'd be a lot of fun. But I can't give you guys a definitive yes or definitive no on that right now. It's just sort of like, you know, we're talking about it, right? It's We're, we're just talking about it. So I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you guys so freaking much for watching this series. Thank you for watching this episode. I hope I blew your minds with some of my little tricks and tidbits and behind the scenes stuff. Um, I absolutely adore this series. I adore this tower. I adore this server. I adore everybody that I play with and I adore all of you guys for supporting this and supporting me and watching this series and just making this probably one of the best series on my channel of all time. Like, I think the first battle has like over a million views. What the heck? Like, that's insane. So you guys, you guys are awesome. And, you know, I want to thank you so much for for just being being as much of a part of this as um, I was just creating the content. Um, you know, 125 episodes. That's insane. That's more than like TV shows are even, I mean, I, you know, 125 videos. I know you guys are probably going to want more, but you know what? You can always go back. There's a playlist on my channel archived every episode. You can watch whatever episode you want and it's going to be there until YouTube shuts their doors, right? So go enjoy some old, old episodes. Um, check out some of the new stuff that I'm doing. I'm doing a lot of awesome stuff right now. I hope you guys enjoy that as well, but thank you so much for watching this and I will see you guys next time. Peace.